Pardon the interruption. I'm Jared Ware, and Roger Goodell, he took a look at last week's video, and he decided after watching the video evidence that PTR is the best show in the world. So, PTR is the best show in the world, and I think our best episode was our Olympic episode. I think it was. Where we still. did not know if the topics too well, and we don't know the topics too well today. So, if we gotta, you haven't we seen the Olympic on. episode, please go on Blip and watch it. It is an hour and 15 minutes of probably the best production value that Anchor TV has ever produced. And we've the done big great board. stuff here. The big board. Let's get right into the first topic here. We have 13 topics today. Let's start off right at the top. Do you agree with the NFL backing the ref's decision on the touchdown? So last night, what I heard was being called the fail Mary, which I like. The inaccurate reception, I also like that one a lot. The playoff, the immaculate reception, Franco Harris Steelers. Uh, if you didn't know at home, Dan, I'm guessing you did. I did. But should the NFL... Should they came out today? They backed that decision. They gave the uh, the Seahawks the win. Should they have done that? You know what are they going to do? Take away the win? They can't do that. And then the the referees, you know, the NFL got themselves into this mess. Yeah. So they got to back the referees in this situation right here. The refs obviously blew the game. We've been waiting for a game to be blown. Yep. And obviously it's a it's a playoff team. We think in the Green Bay Packers. Yep. Seattle somehow has two wins now, which I mean they beat the Cowboys. They lost to the Cardinals. It seems like a terrible schedule. They should be on three. It seems like. But they won the game. It was just an awful night for the NFL. Like, I, it was actually funny. It was actually funny. Like, I was laughing watching the game last night, thinking about what just happened. It was it was funny. The players had to run back on the field, search through two, like, ton, like, not two ton, but, like, two huge yep. boxes of helmets just for their helmet. Cedric Benson was on the, pu the point up to touchdown block. The guys didn't do anything. They just had 11 guys yep. go out there. They should have thrown the punter out there. They should have thrown the punter and the kicker. And then the nine other suckiest guys in the team out there for that extra point. I think the NFL could have come out today as a league office, looked at that play. It was the last play of the game. The only reason they had to kick that extra point is because it's in the rules. The last play of the game, you have to finish with the extra Stupid point. Stupid rule. Stupid anyway. Like, we don't kick an but extra point in overtime. The, the league office could have come out today and said, look, we've seen the tape. You've seen the tape. Everyone's seen the tape. It was an interception. The, re the re These replacement refs got it wrong. We're changing it. Green Bay wins that game. Seattle, you dropped a one and two. You didn't win that game. I don't care what Pete Carroll says. I don't care what Golden Tate says. I don't uh, care what Russell Wilson says. It was tweets. awful watching Pete Carroll get into Yeah, Pete Carroll. Game. I got to run back and go get I, the extra you know, point. I love how Pete Carroll was like two inches away from the ref who was talking over the. Did you see that shot? I did not. The normal know. camera shot of the ref explaining the, uh, like, after he reviewed it. Pete Carroll's right there in the shot, celebrating on camera like an they idiot. They could have reversed Pete the call. Carroll. Like, how, how I think, stupid are I think the NFL office should have come out today and said, that's a Green Bay win. That's on us. We're going to go sit down and talk with the real refs. We're going to get this done. How is no Green Bay Packer flipping back. out? Oh, Twitter was blown up. One oh, of their who, reserve Twitter. linemen was Twitter. freaking out. Uh, like, we're going to really get Twitter's something done big. with Twitter. Twitter. Well, it's big now. So well, you're not going to reverse the game call with Twitter. I mean, that's just the bottom line right there. Okay. But bottom line, though, is bat it down. You bat it down, and it, you get a Detroit-Tennessee situation, which yeah, we'll get into. Yeah, we will get into that. Next topic. Time to push the panic button on the Patriots. So, Pat's lost another another close one, another heartbreaker. And I'm going to say no, it is not panic time for the New England Patriots. Look, you lost two games. One, you should have won against the Cardinals going into it as, as heavy favorites. And then this game was a little dicey because it's, it's in Baltimore. It's against a great team. So, it's not time to push the panic button. Look, you lost two games by a combined three points. You still got the easiest schedule in the NFL. You still got the AFC East, which if you watch the Jets and the Dolphins the other day, they both yeah. blew. They were giving away the game to the other team. So finally, someone hit a field goal to win it. So you still got that going for you. You still got Tom Brady, who was great the other day. But the one thing you got to worry about is his defense. You thought the defense yeah. had improved. Yeah. I think they were giving up like 15 points a game in the first two games. Now they're back to 31. Flacco was just throwing the ball all over the place the other day. Sometimes he was even throwing this to the Patriots, and the Patriots just drop yeah. it or just trip or do something stupid. I'm not pressing the panic button, but my hand is hovering very close. Wait, what, what's your panic button? Home field advantage, or is it division? My panic button is like a 10-win season, creeping into the playoffs, losing in the first round. That's close to the, that's. We expect better than that. We keep saying this is the easiest schedule in the league, but the NFC West is better than we're giving them credit for. Seattle, yeah, I mean, Seattle's defense can get after you, and if you have to go to Seattle with the 12th man, Chris Clemens coming off right, the edge. Let's take it easy with the 12th that. man. I dislike I, uh, well, every 12th man. They're loud the out there in Seattle. They're loud. I'll give them that. Which, but the 12th man that is that plays a part in your offense. I'm not going to say it doesn't. Did you see Brady the other night? Did you see Collinsworth? The you guy can have more than two, you can have two 12 men. Like, I don't get why it's a, Kyle Field. How about, there's no 12th man. Kyle, just Kyle Field is one thing. 
Quest Field is another. That's the worst name in stadium history. But it's actually CenturyLink Stadium now. I keep going. I'm going to call it Quest Field until I die. But uh, so I'm right over the panic button. The secondary is atrocious. Let's be honest. We made Joe Flacco look like one of the best quarterbacks oh, of all every, time every, on that last every other game that I mean, it's unbelievable. Torrey Smith ate us up again, like he did in the AFC Championship game. And you got to give him credit playing with a heavy heart. That was an unbelievable. I mean, it was a great performance, but I wasn't surprised at all. Like, no, exactly. Stuff like this it is just like okay, the Patriots—they're going to be terrible against Torrey Smith. We need to shore up our, our secondary. If you can't stop anyone in late close game situations, you're not going to win a Super Bowl. When was Bowl. the last time the Patriots closed a team out that was good? It seems like they it always lose these games. And to win a Super Bowl, you have to beat good teams. Okay. It happened in the AFC Championship game. We should have lost that game last well, year. Well, it, could, it should have been overtime. And we should have lost in the Super Bowl. We did. We couldn't stop anyone in late game, close situations. That, our secondary that was is awful. called making a play. Devin McCourty has hands of stone. But the bottom, another bottom line is you don't need to be with home field advantage to win the playoffs. The last two years, wild card teams won. Well, actually, the Giants won a wild card team, but they were nine and seven. We're not. We're not making a deep nine run and seven to win the division. Look, from what I've seen, week two, week three, we're not making a deep playoff run. All it's right, that simple. Right. I mean, Pat, where was the pass rush on Sunday night? It was not. Where was the secondary? We're it's a sucks. linebacker heavy defense, and those guys really can't cover anyone coming out of the backfield or tight ends. Those guys are run stopping linebackers. Even though I like all three of them, spikes. Mayo, uh, as well as Hightower, I think they're excellent wow, in run stop. SEC kills it on the New England Patriots. That is true. Tennessee, Tennessee, uh, Florida, and um, Alabama. Brandon Bolden from Old Miss. Next, next topic. I had no relevance to the linebackers. Next but I topic. Who's had a better three games, Flacco or Brady? I'm gonna go with the guy who's got two wins, Joe Flacco. Probably should have had three. Had an opportunity, the ball in his hand against Philadelphia to lead them back down the field and win that game. That would have been a nice win for them. But at two and one, I'm taking the guy who's winning games. He looked good. All right, the Pat secondary might not be the best unit in the, in the NFL, but he was able to beat them, beat them consistently. I like the way that they've gone to the no huddle offense. They have Ray Rice. You really have to pick your poison now against Baltimore. Are right, you gonna set up to stop Ray Rice? Or are you going to set up the top, stop Torrey Smith, Anquan Bolden, Jacoby Jones, Ed Dixon, Dennis Pitta? They're a good offense. I'm taking Joe Flacco. I think he's going to have a great year. And I think his comments earlier in the year where he said he was one of the elite quarterbacks, I think he proves himself there. I think he proves that he's a top five quarterback in the NFL. No, I want to go different with you. I like disagreeing with you, but I'm not going different. I think it's Joe Flacco again. Two wins compared to one. Brady had a chance to win the game against Arizona, and he was really terrible. First week of the season, Tennessee, he played fine. The other night against Baltimore, he played fine. But, you know, if they if the if the Patriots' offensive line could have done anything in the fourth quarter the other day, yeah. it would have been Tom Brady. But Flacco had a great game against Cincinnati. Like you said, they could have won in Philadelphia. And then this week, I don't even want to think about it. Let's give Flacco though. credit. He started every game since he was a rookie for Baltimore. That's five years. Or this is his fifth season, so four seasons now. If he doesn't get hurt, he'll start every game this year. I think he's a really good quarterback. I think he's developed. He's got a strong arm. He's making good decisions. And finally, you can look at Baltimore's receiving core and say, hey, they have some talent on the outside with Ray Rice running the ball. Baltimore is a dangerous team. I don't want to say Super Bowl for them yet because I still question their defense. They weren't excellent on Sunday night. They were good in spots. If they get Terrell Suggs back midway through the year, that changes their defense completely. I did not but like seeing Suggs on the sidelines. Yeah, I, I hate Terrell Suggs. Yeah, like, oh, I hate Terrell Suggs so much. Once you see the guy's so face, you just like, I hate I him. You didn't go to the school of hard playing. knocks. You went to Arizona State. The last time I checked, that's not the hardest core school in the country. Arizona State. Settle down. Next topic. School of hard knocks. Better win. Arthur over Chandler or John in UFC? This is a Jones family question here. So we got Arthur and Chandler. We're keeping up with the Joneses, as uh, like John that. Sterling likes to say, which when Andrew Jones hits a home run, it's, he's terrible. Let's con continue. Arthur, Ravens beat Chandler's Pats. John Jones beat Vitor Belfort to keep his UFC light heavyweight title. So who had the better win? I'm going to go with John. Keeping your light heavyweight championship of the world, the best mixed martial arts organization, that's a huge win. It's a little better than a regular season game. And Arthur really doesn't play much for the Ravens. He's on the roster. He's a squad guy. He's not really a star. Chandler's a star for the Patriots. He'll be a star in this league for probably 10 years. Uh, I, I mean, I love the way he played. And if Michael Ower wasn't tackling him on every play, he probably would have had two, uh, a sack and a half. You so calling that a tackle? I'm going, John. A.K.A. a hold? Ho yeah, Ower was all over him. He did hold him a few times, just threw him down. You know, I'm going to take Arthur here. You're going brother against okay. brother. When, when are you going to see that? Yeah. that it's, it's we very won rare. the McCordys. 
The McCourties and, and you saw Mrs. McCourty. We did not. See, I don't. I didn't. I saw see, Mrs. McCourty. I no, no. We didn't see Mister or Mrs. Jones. I didn't see. Well, they were probably in Canada for the UFC fight. Yeah, that's not a long flight. Yeah, well, there's a Our, UFC fight. They have money. The kids have money. They could fly them down. They they truly could. But I'm gonna go Arthur here. Look at Chandler Jones. If Chandler Jones showed up and pressured Joe Flacco, Patriots would have won the game. He was getting held. But he was not getting any pass rush on there. He wasn't. So it didn't happen. Just a brother versus brother comp like game. You gotta go brother over brother. Do we blitz ever too? That's a serious question. You know, you, do we you, ever blitz? You do want to blitz every every. And I don't. I don't think we again. blitz enough, and I don't think our linebackers are great blitzers as a unit. Like I said, they're run stoppers. They want to take on fullbacks in the hole. The run is not really cool anymore in the NFL. No, it's not. And Rob Nikovich is one of our defensive ends. Riddle me that. Next topic. <laughs> is Tennessee Detroit the wildest game you've seen? So Tennessee Detroit had Detroit was down. It had everything. There was a there was a fumble taken back for a touch not a fumble, a strip so, yeah, Detroit, taken back. Detroit was on the move to tie things up. Fumble, Altron Burner brings that back for a touchdown. Tennessee extends the Stafford lead. Stafford gets hurt. You my MVP. It's over. Yep. My, my MVP. Uh, my fantasy football quarterback. Stafford gets hurt. Sean Hill comes in. Journeyman Sean Hill. Two touchdowns in like the last three minutes. Sends it to overtime. A Hail Mary tip ball catch by Titus Young. Titus Young Sr., by the way. We There's a Titus Young Jr.? I guess. I didn't know that. We go to overtime. New NFL rules. Tennessee gets it. Kicks the field goal. Detroit is in the red zone. Allegedly... According to Jim Schwartz, they didn't want to go for it on fourth and one. They wanted to try, try and draw them offside. Loud crowd in Tennessee. They couldn't get the communication there. They went for it. Loud crowd stuffed, in Tennessee. When is there ever a loud crowd in Tennessee? Got stuffed in the red zone when they could have kicked the field goal to extend overtime. All right. Well, we just it gave was a minute break. It was wild. Was it the wildest game you've ever seen? Yes. To me, it is not. Did you watch the 2007 Fiesta Bowl? I did. And that was my wildest game I've ever seen. Boise State, we finally get a, a non-BCS school Ooh. into the okay. BCS. Okay. Jerry Sabransky throws a pick. It was a good game. Takes it back to the house. Now, Boise State has like a minute to get a score. Fourth and 18, by the way. Yep. Zabransky throws it. Hook and ladder. You know who caught the, the Gerard, first? The Gerard, first. Gerard, Gerard Rabe ran into the end. You know who the, caught the first pass? Drayson James. Was it? I thought it was like a do na nay. No, Drayson James, I actually just I know like a do na nay was on there. So then that happens. You have to go to overtime now. What happens in overtime? Adrian Peterson, run. Then on fourth and goal, I believe it was, you got Vinny Pretter, a wide receiver who's in the backfield on fourth and goal, scores a touchdown. Then that's one point down. All right, let's kick the extra point. Not Chris, jo uh, Chris Johnson. Ian, Ian Johnson. Johnson. We the all know knitter. the Statue the of Liberty. And then Jared Zabrinski, by the way. I wonder if he's still in Nets. Jared Zabrinski, by the Not way. Not just the Statue of Liberty. Statue of Liberty, run right to his girlfriend, proposed. Which is hilarious. Like I say, Jared Zabransky got on the cover of NCAA Football 2008 because of it. He did. Which is a great video game. One of the great names in college football, like a Dunane on that team. He was with San Diego for a little while, but he got switched to tight end. He was a wide receiver. Next topic. That's just fun facts for you if you ever get that in bar trivia. Yeah. Yeah. Would you try and ice the kicker? So we saw Joe Philbin trying to ice Nick Folk. It didn't work out because they blocked the first kick that Nick Yeah, Folk but you, know, you heard the whistle ahead of time? And and that was, sort of it was one of those late whistles. Everyone was still was still working hard. I'm not icing the kicker ever. These guys know how to make field goals. I don't care if it's from 55, 62, 17, 31. I don't care. I'm letting these guys go. I'm letting my guys, I'm giving my guys the confidence that either A, we have a good enough field goal block, you're athletic enough to make a play, go do it. I don't need to ice this guy. And it doesn't work. Most of the time, you I'm more the percentages are pretty much the same. What pretty I've seen mo in most 70, cases 70%. is you 70, see the guy 70, miss 70%. the first one, then he makes the second one. Heads up, just say, you know what, guys, I trust you. Let's go up the middle, or let's come off the edge. Let's get a block here. And if we don't get it, we don't get it. We should have stopped them earlier. Like I, I'm gonna throw this out there. I'm not Jason Garrett. I'm not icing my own kicker. Yeah, you know, Jason Garrett's an idiot. But it's personal preference here, and I think it'd be pretty fun to stand next to the referee and give him one of these. And then it's pretty awful when he misses the 50-yarder and you could have won the game, and that's that. Then pretty he fun. makes it. And pretty then fun. You're... Give it a shot. I'm not going to do that. Come on. No, I'm all right. All right, well, I, I guess I would ice the guy. kicker. I mean, it doesn't matter percentage-wise, but it'd just be fun to give a little a little tippity-tap right next to the referee. Okay. Get nice and close to him, like Petey. Yeah. All right, next topic. <laughs> ice them just so you can do it. Who is worse, the New Orleans, New Orleans Saints or the Arkansas Razorbacks? So you got the Saints right now 0-3. You got Arkansas one and three right now with a loss to the uni to the uni University of Louisiana Monroe, the Warhawks, but they've been on a tear. 
Uh, not the Warhawks are one of those teams that were like called the Indians, and then the state yeah, they like, had to change. made they a change. change. Come on, be cool. That's like Natick. They had to change from the red men to the red and white, or red and blue. Whose team is the red and blue? Natick. Natick High School. Natick Who, who's two colors? That's a disgrace to, to colors and to the school. Natick is red and blue. Then I think that's more. Yeah, yeah. You can go. You can go big blue, or you can go big red. You don't go red and yeah, blue. Well, what kind of garbage is that? I d I'm not on the the Natick school board. Would you board. switch schools because of that? Because no. I wouldn't. Even though I hate it. No. Anyways, let's focus on this topic right here. Razorbacks, Saints, controversy earlier in the season or pre in both, the preseason. Both teams have controversy. Who are you going with? Who's worse right now? You know, I got to say the Saints are 0-3. Yeah. They had Bounty Gate. But I'm going with the Razorbacks. Come on. You're playing Louisiana Monroe, yep. who is a Sunbelt school. When has a Sunbelt school ever beat any school from the SEC? Uh, last yeah. weekend, Western Kentucky beat Kentucky in Kentucky. That is true. Willie Kentucky Taggart is awful. Doing a great job. Okay, so that happened last week, but it probably hadn't happened for about seven no, years. No, I, I think that was the first. But time I'm going to say Arkansas is worse. Look, you got John L. Smith bringing in as a quarterback. Yeah, John L. Smith. You can find somebody the, better than that. The uncle of Alex Smith. Oh, I didn't know that. No, oh, yeah. So you got John L. Smith coming in. You got your quarterback hurt. You got your quarterback throwing his teammates under the bus. Yeah. You lose 52 to nothing to the number one team in the country at home. When you're like the tenth ranked team in the country, you cannot have that stuff happening. They they're pretty much going nowhere this year, and I'm enjoying it. Another bar trivia fact: Alex Smith was only, the only school he got recruited to, major school, Michigan State, when his uncle was the head coach, John L. Smith. But decommitted after after he thought his co his uncle was going to get fired. His uncle got fired. He goes to Utah. That's just another bar trivia thing. Another picking fun up, fact. Another fun today. fact that I meant to point out: Titus Young, senior was in the 2007 Fiesta Bowl, as well as that Titans yes, Detroit Lions was. game. He was. That's nice. Uh, I'm going to Arkansas as well. This was a team preseason before Ned Bobby Petrino crashed his motorcycle. They had a great chance of winning a national championship game. They, get Ar they had Alabama at home, and they played LSU. I think they played it's, LSU it's, neutral it's site. At, it's at but it's in Little Ar Rock, it's, which it's is neutral like, site you got 30,000 yeah. more screaming fans at Fayette. Yeah, exactly. And like another 200 miles for the LSU This was a national fight. championship team. And let's remember, they lost last week to Rutgers, a good defense, a top 10 defense statistically. Terrible But they helmets. had Tyler Wilson. Can you give me that? Yeah, their uniforms okay. are awful. Uh, but Tyler Wilson, the number two rated quarterback in this class, I thought he was going to be a top 15 pick in the NFL draft. His stock obviously plummeting right now. It, it might not be his He could still fault. be a first round pick. Come on. Well, yeah, but he's not going to be top 15. Kobe Man. Hamilton. Kobe Hamilton had 300 yards receiving in that game. He still lose to Rutgers. And, and, and like I said, I want to give Rutgers credit. 4-0 on the season. Great defense. They could be a surprise in the Big East. But you got to beat Rutgers. You're an SEC school. You, like you said, you you uh, you lose to ULM. Arkansas has got to figure it out. John L. Smith is getting fired sooner rather than later, and they're they're going to have to go from there because, look, if you if you wait too long to change your coach in college football, you can lose five years. You got to make a change now, and you got to get things going, refigure it out. Arkansas, a lot of talent on that team, but leadership. John L. Smith is awful. He, he's an awful coach. Under 500 at Michigan State, and he gets hired at Arkansas. He was at Louisville before that, also. He was, was good at Louis, he was good at he was good at Louisville, but he was ah, awful at Michigan State. I was State. young. I was a youngster. He was terrible at Michigan State. Awful. Next topic. Let's get to some golf. Is the Ryder Cup your favorite golf tournament? All right. So the Ryder Cup's coming up this week, and I am pumped. Yeah. Excitement level nine. Okay. Out of ten. Okay. So I'm gonna say it is my favorite golf tournament. I'm okay. all about national pride. Olympics. Okay. We you you got to yep. see our Olympic episode because that's two Olympic references. Yes, in this one show. it's it's really something so. else. The intro is something else also. Oh yeah. Okay, so, and then I'm just huge on the huge on the national pride. Yep. Do you know Michael Jordan? Fun fun bar fact again. Michael Jordan is an assistant coach on this team. I didn't know that. That's excellent. That is so Ned. So Michael Jordan's an assistant. So we'll probably be gonna interview a day out of him. But it's my favorite golf tournament because I only really pay attention to the majors. I don't really care about this FedEx Cup garbage that they try to throw down your throat that has, like, the 30 best golfers in the last week. Yeah. I don't care about that. So I watch the majors. I root for the Americans. There's usually American and a, a foreigner in there. I root for the American. Usually the foreigner wins now. But, now you know, it's a good little rivalry. The U.S. was getting spanked around a little bit early in this in uh, the last decade. But they won in 08, Boo Weekly. Last time it came around, 2010, they went to uh, Ireland or something. Lost by a point, fourteen and a half to thirteen. I think it was I think it was Celtic Manor. Okay, and Celtic Manor. And I'm, I'm we're on we're on home soil this year. Medina, 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 Medina. Medina. I, I like the chances. 
It's my favorite tournament. We'll get after, we'll get into the chances next topic. Uh, uh, that's why I didn't spill the beans. Is it my favorite tournament? No. I'm a Masters guy through and through. Easter weekend, so you get a nice Sunday meal in the morning. Then you get a nice Easter dinner. You're eating Easter dinner. You're watching Tiger Woods play Augusta. You got Jim Nance, green grass. Spring is coming. You've been in your house, winter, for the last three months. It's been terrible. It's been awful. Masters, the way to go. That course is in immaculate can, uh, shape. And Every course always, is in immaculate shape. No, well, Augusta National is is above that then, above immaculate. I don't even know if there's a word to describe that. If everyone else is immaculate, Augusta is way above and beyond that. But anyways, there's always a great finish in the Masters, always a, a packed leaderboard, great players, great shots. We saw well, Bubba got, Watson from the Well, you get lucky because you get in playoffs every year in that. Yeah, but the, the leaderboards have been great. Yo, 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 the, the Ryder Cup needs a playoff. If if it's tied, you know what happens? It goes to the winner of the like, last cup. I like, t- kind of I like that. Nendis to be the that. best, you got to beat the best. I like that. You know, I do like that, but come on. If it's a tie, do you really want to be champions, or do you want to go to a playoff? To be the best, you got to beat no, no, the no, best. No, 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 no. You go to the playoff. Eh, no. You go to the playoff. Do you really want to win in a tie? I want to win. You're tied. You're not a winner. I'm the champ. you got to dethrone me. Next no, topic. you're tied. Get, you're not a winner. Let's get a predictions. Well, we won the last one, so we win this one. What's your Ryder Cup prediction? Lost the last one. What's that? We, no, we I know it's USA, won, but I meant I won the last one, then we tied, so I, I'm still the best. Yeah, it's a stupid rule. I'm all right with that. Ryder Cup predictions. My the big, stupider rules in sports? My big prediction is we all know Sunday, the final pairing in singles, it's going to be Rory, it's going to be Tiger, ratings are going to be through the roof. Wait, 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 we've already predetermined Rory Tiger, isn't that oh, final? Oh, my, this is, it's lo- set in stone. Set in stone. Look, and you know, what if, what if the you know, if Rory's dirty? You know, and NBC. You know, NBC right now is, is is if they could get in those coaches' ears, they're saying you put those Davis two. Love? You put those two. The final group Who's on the Sunday. Captain? Um, I'll think of it in a second. I know, okay. I know, but I can't think of it. Um, but you put those two in the final group on Sunday on an NFL Sunday. Maya, I, I'm going golf. Uh, to be honest, I'm watching Rory Tiger head to head in match play. This is what we've wanted. And this is a, a microcosm of where golf is going for probably the next five to seven years. These two head to head. I'm going to take Tiger winning that matchup. I'm going to take the USA. Tiger at Medina. He's won two PGA championships at Medina. Loves the course. He'll play well there again. The last time the PGA was there, he ran away with it. So I'm taking Tiger over Rory, United States over Europe. You're not going to give us a score? Close. Close. Well, I'm going to go. Like a half. Day point. one. Day one, you get the pairs going. Yep. US. We'll have like a point, a point lead, two and a half to one and a half. Yep. Next day, it'll, it'll be close. It'll be within one, one to two points going into Sunday, which is which is probably my favorite day in golf. Yep. Twelve head to head matchups is awesome. Oof. From and it goes on for like three hours. Yep. Like you'll get the you'll get people coming on the 18th. So it's just a great great day. You get two people per per hole. So you're not you're yeah. not gonna get you're not gonna get everything log jammed like uh, you, you see on your on your basic yeah. golf course. Yep. But that's just how the PGA is, anyways. Two, two guys. But I'm gonna go with the, the Yanks. Close going into Sunday, breaking away. The crowd is gonna carry them. Hopefully, somebody brings out the Boo Weekly. Uh, yeah. Adam Sandler. In the, stateside, we usually win stateside. We need this. We really do need this because a lot. The public opinion is that Europe surpassing the United States. Well, golf the public right opinion now, is the U.S. is as as good as Europe, but Europe has like better team camaraderie. Camaraderie. Yeah, I, I'm sick. I can't say camaraderie <laughs> that well. Next, next topic. Do you trust the Knowles? I like this picture we got here. Florida State, Chief Osceola. Florida State, the huge win on Saturday night. If you read my article on the anchor, you got the full breakdown. It was so I won't even fear the spear. So I won't even go into it. Just pick up an anchor off uh, newsstands right now. Read fear the spear. Great article. Florida State with the big win. The defense looked shaky to start the game. Second half. Absolutely dominant. This Florida State team poised for a national championship run. Easiest schedule in college football. Their next rec- uh, next ranked game is rivalry weekend, November 24th against Florida, a team that they should still dismantle Florida. I see them in the national title against the winner of Alabama LSU, and they have a great chance of winning that game. Bjorn Warner, the Germinator, guy's got six and a half sacks on the year so far. I don't is know it, if is it Werner or, or Warner? I don't know which it's way. It's got to be Werner. I think they call they call him Bjorn Warner. So I'm over, that's what that's what they were saying on Sun, uh, Saturday night. But okay. he gets after Tank Carradine. Xavier Rose was great on the backside. Their linebackers can fly. EJ Manuel is a beast. They have four elite running backs. This Florida State team is loaded. Jimbo Fisher's got him going. The Knowles, 
January 7th, BCS National Championship game. They could win it. You calling it? I'm putting it put it on the books. Are you going to bet on it? I Well, not right now, but if they made it, I would. You probably won't. Okay, so I'm going to go the opposite direction here. I'm going to say the Nulls, I don't trust them. Every year they get they get these high po- they get these high rankings again this year they're in the top five to start the season. So far they've proved us to be a top five team, but there's still what eight games left plus the ACC championship game. They're gonna falter in one of these. Miami, games. NC State, DC, NC St- is NC State on the road? Virginia Tech, NC State on the road. NC State on the road. Oh, that's the game right there. NC they State like- that lost to Tennessee. Please. Oh, can can I talk here? No, oh, keep going. I mean the point. Go ahead. Every year the Knolls they uh, th- th- they falter. This is what's going to happen this year. They're going to go to NC State. E.J. Manuel, the guy who runs for 100 yards a game, he's going to get hurt. They're going to throw him their backup. The guy's going to suck. They're going to lose Trickett, to NC State. He's got experience, and he led them to a few wins last year. So I trust Clint, Clint Trickett. Okay, well, I'm not going to trust Clint Trickett. So, Knowles losing to NC State. There's one game they're going to lose. They could win. There's, they, they there's could lose no another chance one. Florida there's, State They're not going to make State. the NCAA. There's uh, no championship. chance Florida State loses to NC State. They could play that game. In front dude, of 200, 250,000 rabid North Carolina fans, North Carolina State fans, and they would still win by 40 points. There's no chance. All right, all right, they can all play right. with these NFL replacement reps and still win by 40 points. I'm going to go with This is an SEC defense. Why have you ever been able to trust Knowles? This is an SEC defense. Every, I trust every defense. Every year, are they going to be a top five team? I they're going to lose one, one game. They're going to be ACC champions. And every year, oh, Look, they go five and three in the ACC, lose to three scrubs. The and last, they're like 25th by the end of the, the season. The last quarter and a half of that game. Clemson looked like a Pop Warner team against Florida State. Clemson is a good team to elite talent all over Clemson's roster. They made them look awful. You know, Florida you know State. what used to be great when Bobby Bowden was coaching? I noticed this the other night. Brady Hoke didn't wear a headset. Did you see uh, they showed when, because Bobby Bowden's son was a coach at Clemson, so they showed an old shot of Bobby Bowden's wife and she was wearing a half Florida State, half Clemson sweater. I did not it see that. Great. It was like great. It would have been 1991. You know what was great? Because I noticed Brady Hoke didn't wear a headset until like late in the game. Remember when Bobby Bowden wouldn't wear the headset because the guy didn't know what was going on? Because he was senile. He didn't even know where he and was. Then, and then the Knowles are losing by like a point. And then it, then the next time you look at him, he has the headset. He's calling all yeah, the offensive plays. Before you know it, the Knowles lose by he like was in 14. And out. He was in and out. I don't know what he was. Bobby Bowden. He was great. But next topic. What college stadium do you want to watch a game in? So I visited Notre Dame this year. It was a great experience. Indeed. But it wouldn't be the place I want to go to see a yep. game. Where I'm going, under the lights, Tiger Stadium, Death Valley, okay. Baton Rouge, Louisiana, okay. Louisiana State. Okay. You got to go under the lights, though, and it's got to be an SEC yeah. game. Yep. You got to go. I just think it would be a great experience. You got yep. tailgaters all day. You gotta take in the experience. The game is only part of the experience. Oh yeah, come on. Outside the stadium yeah. is where you, you get the full on, full on great time. So that's where I'm going. I'm going to Baton Rouge. I'm gonna get on the purple. I'm gonna get on the yellow. Maybe maybe body paint it. Maybe I can get a couple of nets to do LSU with me. Hit up Tiger Stadium for a night game against an SEC opponent. Ninety three thousand fans. I've had the same answer since I was probably six years old. I want to go down to Gainesville, the swamp, midday game, hot heat. Humidity, late, uh, late August, early September, big SEC clash, Gator bait, Gator chomping all game long, right behind the end zone. Great fight song going. You're eating fried alligator tail before the game. Great atmosphere. I want to be in the swamp. Loud stadium. I'm taking the swamp. Ben Hill Griffin Stadium. If you didn't know its real name. Next Honestly, you could go any SEC stadium and probably. Yeah, let's be honest. The SEC does, they do it right. They tailgate right. They get, uh, let's they get be honest. linebackers the, pack, the Patriots want. Let's be honest. If LSU and Alabama are undefeated going into November 3rd, I'm pretty sure both schools, even the professors, are like, we're not having class this week. Like, start tailgating right now. Let's get ready for this. Death Valley, Alabama coming in. Let's get excited. Rick, we would never do that for anything. We should be, if you're a fan of that game, your professors shouldn't have shouldn't make you go to class. I'm, they should send I'm you I'm body painting for the Rick PC basketball game. That's are you awesome. joining in? It's November 3rd. That's November 3rd. That's a good slate of games. I don't know if I'm going to be available. I may be in front of my TV getting ready. When are you ever going to body paint, though? you got to take in the body there'll paint There'll be experience. an opportunity to body paint. There won't be an opportunity for undefeated Alabama LSU on the road. That's going to be That'll upset. happen, like, every year, yeah. as long as Nick Saban and Les Miles are head coach. Yeah, yeah. maybe. Okay. Who knows? Still a great game. Next topic. Who's your favorite broadcaster? Are we going favorite We're overall going NFL. broadcaster? We're going NFL broadcaster. Okay. That's my fault. I did the graphics. I forgot to say NFL. No biggie. We got big game Bob in the corner because he's Bobby. On Sunday Night Football. Yeah, are you going to go or are you want No, to go? you go ahead. All right, so my favorite NFL broadcaster, I don't like anybody on Fox. Let's get that out there. Yeah, Fox is awful. Except Goose, Moose, and Kenny Albert. 
So you got to switch around. You got to look around, you know. If I had to pick one broadcaster, you know, I get Phil Sims and Jim Nance almost every week. Yeah. But I watch CBS almost every week. And yeah. you know who I really look forward to watching? Kevin Harlan. Okay. I was talking to Ryan Eaton. I really like Rich Gannon. Caller, I think Rich Gannon is excellent. But he's with he Mark Albert, job. who's the worst on CBS. Yes, I can. I agree with you there. I think Rich Gannon is great, but I think when it comes to NFL broadcasters, there's only one guy who deserves this title. John Gruden, the guy, energy, excitement, knowledge, energy, more excitement. The guy loves it. He's always. He's always seems like he's on the edge of his, edge of his seat. It could be 37-7. A team getting blown out. Gruden's excited about some fullback hitting a nice kickout block. Running back picks up six yards. He loves that stuff. It's contagious. And the guy is such a student of the game. I'm a John Gruden fan. I think he's excellent. It's great about Gruden when they call when they used to call Patriot games. Now they're like ESPN employees. Look at this block right here yeah. at Todd White. Coming around, they're trying to send the rush on the outside. Todd White is there. Yeah. He's gonna stop him, right? Look, look, look. Oh, Todd White is just a great Lyman on the New England Patriots has been, always will be. Gruden is excellent. Buddy, his name's Matt Light. Yeah. You work with him now. I want to go to the Fire Football Coaches Association and watch tape with them for like hours. That, that would be excellent. It probably would be pretty awesome. That and I'm not even best. like, I don't, I have not watched one like second of, of tape of, about football in my life. Oh, it'd be excellent. Next Last topic. topic. Last topic. Yeah, we're done. Best theme song in sports. So this was spurred on by, we heard the Ryder Cup theme song on, was that Saturday? It was uh, Saturday because it was during the Notre Dame. Yes, uh, we heard it. Pretty solid theme. What's the best theme in sports? The best theme song in sports. You know, you get a lot of them, and a lot of them are pretty good. You got Sunday Night Football, which is great. Monday Night Football used to be okay. NFL and CBS is okay. Fox Baseball is okay. NBA on NBC used to be a rollicking good time. Rum Ball Rock, John Tesh. Yeah. But the best theme song in sports, you're going to look at a period from 1993 to 2003, I believe. CBS NCAA basketball tournament. Okay. That is the best right there. I don't know why they changed it up to 2003. I might have to protest watching the college basketball tournament now because they don't have that song to get you pumped. You get pumped. You get pumped. At the end, the announcers are, 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 are talking with the music in the background. You're getting really amped. Both teams are shooting their three pointers before the game, and you're just ready to go. Now they got some other garbage that's like more 2012 and it's just awful. Get back the old stuff. Okay. I want to say this right now. Any sporting broadcast that starts with a song, any sort of vocalized song where the there's The CeeLo Green involved, Thursday Night Football needs to go. I don't care if it's Thursday Night Football, Sunday Night Football, Monday Night Football. The last thing I want is someone singing a song. Are you, are you taking a shot game. at Faith right now? I am taking a huge shot at Faith. I don't want to start my football excitement with a stupid song. I don't need a song. I don't need some hillbilly asking me, am I ready for football? That's why I turned the TV to ESPN on Monday night. I'm already ready for football. I don't need this guy to prompt me about it. Best theme song in sports, Masters theme. It's excellent. It's plucky. It's guitar Plucky. It's excellent. Uh, that's the only way I can describe it. I don't think it. that word will ever be used again on, yeah, Jim on Nance, any Anchor TV program. When Jim Nance, he goes into his, his really like soft and mellow his, his golf they, they show, And then at it's the great. end of the tournament, they show like it's great. all like 75 people that finished. Yeah. And you got to sit through like a yeah. whole two minute montage of the Masters song playing guy. in the background. And you can, I got I got to dig it you too. You got the Masters it's, theme. It's you probably put about that on fifteen of mine. You put that on your iPod while you're outside on a nice spring day. Maybe you're just laying around. You got it on your it's iPod. Ex it's excellent. I don't right now, but it's a. It could get on soon. Who knows? I would not be against putting it on my iPod. That's great. It is a great theme song. So that's going to be it today. Thanks for tuning in, tuning yeah. in live on Anchor TV. You got to thank Milka Tolich, Ryan Bancourt, Tom Lehman, who's at his brother's. Uh, Came back. Went back. He's all Fundraiser, over the place. came back, hustled back. Got to thank him, obviously. Emily LeBlanc, Sam Allen. Everyone did a great job. I pretty much didn't do anything. So, I got to, got to thank all of them. I just came here and just did debated. it. Just debated. Tip your waiters. Else? See you guys next week.